Long ago, on the outskirts of a secluded village, there lived a mother and her daughter, isolated from the villagers. Without a man in their household, the villagers kept their distance, whispering cruel things about them behind their backs. Despite this, the mother and daughter managed to live in peace until the day the daughter got married and moved away, leaving her mother all alone in the lonely house they had shared for years. Time passed, and the mother grew older, weaker, and sicker. The pain of her loneliness gnawed at her as she longed to see her daughter again. But her daughter never came. She had no idea that her mother's health was failing, and she herself was heavy with child. As months passed, the daughter gave birth to a son, oblivious to the fact that her mother had already passed away in her lonely house, waiting in vain for her. The villagers, who had always watched from afar, knew the old woman was sick, but none of them cared enough to check on her. They found her lifeless body one day, lying in her bed, her eyes still open and fixed toward the window, as if still waiting for her daughter to return. Without a word of condolence, they buried her in a shallow grave, far from the village, dismissing her death as just another forgotten soul. But the mother's longing for her daughter was too strong to be silenced by death. That very night, her spirit rose from the grave. She wandered through her empty house, still waiting for her daughter. But one evening, while crouching in the shadows of her own ghostly existence, she overheard a group of young men walking near her house, laughing and talking. One of them mentioned that her daughter had given birth, but sadly, the mother had died without ever meeting her grandson. The words ignited a flame of fury within the ghost of the mother. Her body, frail and bent in life, suddenly became something unnatural in death. She fell to all fours and began running, no, crawling, toward her daughter's village, her limbs twisting and contorting as she sped across the landscape like a beast, muttering over and over, I'm going to see my daughter. I'm going to see my grandson. Her voice had turned into a raspy, inhuman hiss, and as she ran, a low growling sound escaped her throat, almost like the snarl of a wild animal. She ran on all fours, her fingers digging into the earth, her speed unnatural, covering the two-day journey in mere nights. Her mutterings turned into eerie yowls, the sound echoing through the woods like the wail of a night cat. I'm coming. I'm coming. When she finally reached the village, her body twisted back into an upright form, though she now moved with an unnatural stiffness. Her bones cracked and groaned, as she walked toward a couple who were returning from their garden, in a voice that barely sounded human, she asked them where her daughter lived. The couple, sensing something was wrong, hesitated, but eventually pointed her in the direction of her daughter's house. The ghost of the mother moved silently, creeping through the village until she reached the house. Her daughter, who had just stepped outside to fetch water, saw her mother from afar, and felt a momentary surge of joy, unaware of the horror that was slowly stalking toward her. Mom, she called, as the figure inched closer, arms raised like a predator on the prowl. The daughter noticed her mother's strange gait, but dismissed it, thinking the long journey had simply exhausted her. They embraced, though the daughter recoiled slightly at the strange, rotting smell that clung to her mother. What's that smell, Mom? She asked. Oh, it's just me, the mother replied, her voice unsettlingly calm. I haven't bathed in days. The daughter invited her mother inside, offering food and water, but the mother declined, asking instead to sleep in a small storage room to rest from her long journey. The daughter, concerned but tired, agreed, and led her mother to the room, where the ghost slept through the day, or so the daughter thought. That night, as the household prepared for bed, the daughter, 
notice something strange. The door to the storage room creaked open slightly, and she caught a glimpse of her mother, crouched in the dark, her eyes glowing faintly in the dim light. Mom, are you awake? The daughter called. The ghostly figure didn't answer, but instead stared intensely at the raw meat being prepared for dinner, a low growl escaping her throat. Come out and eat, the daughter said uneasily, but her mother only slunk further into the shadows. The youngest sister, who had been watching the mother's behavior, whispered to her older sister, doesn't grandma smell like, like death? Shh, don't be rude, the older sister scolded. She's just tired from traveling. Later that night, when the house was silent, the ghostly mother emerged from the storage room. She moved silently through the house, sniffing the air, her eyes glinting in the darkness. She crept toward the baby's room, her movements unnatural, like a spider crawling along the walls. As she reached the baby's cradle, her twisted hand hovered above him, fingers twitching. She whispered in a voice that no longer resembled her own, I've come for you, my grandson. But before she could grab the baby, the youngest sister stirred, hearing strange noises. She quietly peered through the crack in her door and locked eyes with the mother, two bloodshot, soulless eyes staring back at her. Terrified, the girl covered her mouth to stifle her scream and crawled back into bed, too scared to move. The mother chuckled darkly and whispered, that's what you get for peeking. The next morning, the family left for the farm, leaving the baby behind at the mother's request. The youngest sister begged her older sister to take the baby with them, but the daughter, still trusting, believed her mother's words. She just wants to spend time with her grandson, she reassured. As soon as they were gone, the ghostly mother emerged from her room, her hunger now uncontrollable. She crept toward the baby, lifting him from the crib with inhuman strength. The baby's cries filled the room as she dangled him by his tiny leg. With a swift motion, she twisted his body apart, feasting on his flesh, leaving only his bones behind. When she had her fill, she stuffed the remains into a bucket and hung it above the storage room door, a twisted trophy of her monstrous act. When the family returned, the youngest sister's heart sank as she realized the baby was missing, but the daughter, still blind to the horror, dismissed her concerns, telling her to check with their mother. Too terrified, the younger sister refused to go near the storage room. Later that night, the daughter went to check on her mother and found the room filled with the stench of death. She pulled back the blankets and saw the tiny bones of her baby beneath. Horrified, she screamed, her voice piercing the night air. Just as her husband arrived, they found the bucket hanging above the door, filled with the remains of their son. The mother's ghost appeared then, her bloodshot eyes glaring at them from the attic. You don't love your mother anymore. The husband grabbed his scythe and the daughter, filled with rage and grief, shouted, You monster! You killed my baby! The ghost howled in anger, leaping from wall to wall, ceiling to floor, avoiding their blows with unnatural speed. As they attacked, she shrieked, I am your mother! How dare you strike me! The husband managed to wound her, driving her from the house. She ran into the middle of the street, crouching like a beast, howling at the moon. You don't love your mother anymore. I'm taking my grandson with me, and you will never see us again. With that, she vanished into the night, her twisted form never to be seen again, leaving the village haunted by her chilling presence for years to come. <laughs>